Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So this is probably the most requested one since the release of 4.27. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Android SDK and NDK. So you can actually build your applications from Unreal Engine and put them directly onto the headset. But just before we get started, I wanna say a big thank you to all the Patreons for making this possible. And if you do need help while you're going through this setup, please head over to the Discord channel so we can help out and it's easier to post screenshots and error codes. So if you do need help, make sure to head on over there, links in the description. And a link will be in the description for every page that I follow here. And this is just the initial setup, setting up Android SDK and NDK for Unreal. We won't follow this all the way through because it does have some issues in places. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that we get the main link for Android Studio Archive. So you can find it here in part one. You can just search for it. So Android Studio Archive, and it has to be the archive. You don't want just default Android, Android Studio, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna hit agree to the terms. So in here, what we wanna do is look for Android Studio 4, and it will be in here somewhere if I can ever find it. I always, I always lose it, Android Studio 4. So here we are, we've got May 28th, 2020, and we just wanna select this as a download which will start start going down. So while that's unloading, I want to explain that your headset does need to have developer mode enabled. You can do that by opening up the app on your phone. So the Oculus app, if I find it. And you'll see here, once you're connected to your headset, it's literally a tab called developer mode. And you just want to make sure that is ticked to true. But make sure your headset's connected to the app first. Then what we can do is you want to make sure you have Oculus Developer Hub installed and the Oculus uh, Oculus desktop. So the desktop app works as a way for Unreal Engine to send information live to the headset. So you can test and debug without having to do a build. It'll just save you so much time. So just make sure you have that done. So that is the Oculus desktop app. So Oculus setup and then download Quest 2 PC app. That's the one that you want to play games as well. So you, you probably already got that installed. And the second one is the Oculus Developer Hub. And it's Oculus Developer Center, downloads, and then you just download and log into your Oculus Developer Hub. If you don't have one, you might need to create one. It requires a bank card or a mobile phone number, I believe, which is normally set up for two-factor authentication anyway, so make sure you've got that. Um, I won't go through these, but I will show you what it looks like. So we've got Oculus Developer Hub, if I open this up. What you wanna do is make sure your headset is connected via a wire or a cable, and then it'll load up in here. You might have to put the headset on as well. So just give that a look. I'm pretty sure this is all simple stuff you'll be able to figure it out. So we're just gonna open up our downloads again and then go through Android Studio IDE. So we're gonna double click this because we wanna go ahead and install it. So I'm gonna hit yes, because it asks me if I want permission. And then we do next. And we wanna make sure the C or it is installed on our C drive. If we install it on a different hard drive to our Unreal Engine or our operating system, it causes a whole bunch of issues. So make sure your Unreal Engine and Android Studio Setup is both installed on your C drive or your main operating system. So install, excellent. So it says it's complete, so we're gonna do next, and then we'll start Android Studio. We wanna do do not import settings, hit okay. And in here we wanna move this. We wanna do next, and then standard, next. And I like the dark mode, just gonna choose that one. Next, and then in here we can see that it actually installs a couple of things for us. So Intel Accelerator, I might have some issues with this. We'll cover that if I do, but we're gonna hit finish. And we're just gonna let this install for us now. This shouldn't actually take that long because the files are actually quite small. But once it's done, we'll come right back and we'll see what happens. So it's completed the download and it's downloaded all the individual components. So if we have a look through, just to double check everything. Um, say it's Haxam installers ready. But I've got a feeling it's gonna error out. Yeah, so Intel Haxam installation failed. For more, for more details, please check the installation log. So we'll remember that, we're gonna hit finish. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do config SDK manager. And in here, I wanna double check that Haxam. So if I go to SDK tools, we've got Intel x86 emulator accelerator Haxam installed. So what we can do is we can go ahead and we'll keep going and we'll see what happens. We might be able to get away with it. So now what we're gonna do is go through and we'll install our Unreal stuff. So in Unreal, so if we go to our C drive and we find our programs file, this is where your Epic Games or your Unreal Engine should be stored. You wanna to go to Epic Games 4.27, which is the engine version that I have installed. And we wanna to go to Engine, Extras, and then Android. And what we wanna do in here is we wanna launch this setupandroid.batch file. What this will do is it'll install some stuff for us and it'll, it'll apply it to our engine so it knows where to look. 
So we're gonna double click this. It says it's fetching remote repository. Hey everyone, Jonathan from the future. I was editing this and I realized that I made a mistake. So if you go to launch the setup.bat and it doesn't work, go to configure in Android Studio, SDK manager, and go to SDK tools. Make sure you have Android SDK command line tools installed. Sometimes it'll work without, sometimes you might need to install it, but if it, if it fails, give that a shot and then do the update linker as well. If that doesn't work, pretty much just head over to the Discord and we'll try and help you out with that. So back to the video. That looks all good. So we're gonna hit yes, or we're gonna put Y and then we're gonna hit enter. And that's gonna carry on downloading platform 28, which we might actually have to change that. We'll take a look, but I'll be able to show you that once this is installed. So I'm gonna leave it for now and then we'll be right back. Excellent, so it looks like everything's worked. So we're gonna hit, I don't even think we need to do the update linker, but we can double click that anyway. I think it should all be fine. Now we have that done. What we want to do is we actually want to keep this window open because we might have to change the version that our, it would be our API is on as there's a couple of different ones. We might have to change it. So we're going to keep this open as so, but what we want to do is we want to launch our Epic games. And if you have a project, you can launch that. I'm just going to launch one I've already got rather than creating a new file. So. All we want to do is actually look at our projects. So library, open one of our projects up. And now we've got it loaded. We want to go to edit project settings. I'm going to scroll down to Android. Oh, I've already got this done. So you hit accept or continue, and then we can go through. So I'm going to pop the headset on for a second and make sure that it's connected to the PC. So yeah, so it's asking me allow USB debugging. I'm going to do allow, always allow for this computer and then allow access to data. I'm going to hit allow again. So now our headset, we can see there in the bottom right, is actually connected to our computer. So I might really need to restart the editor, but I don't. We can see here we've got our Quest 2 is now connected, and we can go to Device Manager. And if we select it, we can see here that we have all the information we need. And by default, they think the Android Studio, so this is where it'll be coming clear, is our Android API is set to 32, whereas what we need is actually level 29. So that's what we need to change now. So in on, in our Android Studio, we can select our API version. So this might change based on what headset you've got or the type of project, like application you're working with. And this is how you can get a really good idea of what you need. So we're just gonna do level 29 in Android. And we wanna uncheck our Android API 32. And we wanna select the Android 10 for 29. And inside our SDK tools, we also want to make sure show package details is on and we want to remove that 32 again. So we're basically just uninstalling the version 32 of it. So that all looks good for what we need. SDK all looks good. And now what we can do is we can just hit apply and that will now install. So it'll uninstall 32 and install 29. Okay. Okay. If you're working with earlier versions of the engine, you could do this for 25, I believe, which is what's required for the Vibe Focus 3. Let all this run its course and then we'll come right back once that's done. So now that we know Android API level 29 is installed, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and open a brand new project. The reason we're not using the one that we just opened, if you're already using one that exists, is because if there's any issues with that project, you won't know what's causing the issues when you build. Whereas if we do a, a brand new one, so we're gonna go Epic Launcher, gonna go launch 4.27.2. We're gonna then open this up and we're gonna change our settings so we can build to the device. So games, next, virtual reality, next. And let's just make a folder on the desktop. It doesn't have to be anything special. So we're gonna name this here. Ideally, there should be no spaces in the folder name. So I've already messed up. So new folder, select, and then we're good to go, create. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna launch it through, actually what I'll do is I'll show you two different ways to launch to the device. And the reason I'm gonna show you two different ways is because one of them pretty much shows you the errors, whereas the second one can be a little bit false sometimes. It can launch to the headset, but sometimes it might not build, which is a really strange one. So we're gonna dismiss. Uh, we're gonna double check that our headset is connected. So make sure it's connected to the, to the device. And you'll see here, because we've connected our headset, it's showing up as the APA, so it's showing up as the devices on here, but we can't actually play it. What you want to do is make sure before you launch Unreal that you have the headset connected and using AirLink or Link through the Oculus, so the Oculus app, and then launch Unreal. So we're actually going to use 
file package project android and stc to launch this but don't do it just yet we want to go to edit project settings we're going to then scroll down to packaging i'm going to show you how to sort all this out later on in another video so all the settings that i use we want to do the drop down and what we want to do is we want to exclude editor content when cooking and for this case we just want to list the maps to include in the build and we're going to choose our vr template maps vr template map this is just going to make our build file smaller so it'll be a little bit quicker to get through everything else in here looks great we're then going to go down to rendering and we're going to make sure that it's just M mobile msaa four times everything in here should actually be able to be ignored which is excellent we'll look at changing these settings to make it better for you for the headset later on but we want to keep going down to android and scroll up and we want to do configure now what i'll do is it'll update our back end stuff and we want to make sure our minimum sdk version matches that 29 value so the api was installed with android so 29 and then package gaming data inside apk that's all we need to do pretty much think no it's not we want to make sure remove oculus signature files from distribution apk is also ticked and package for oculus mobile devices is got oculus quest 2 and oculus quest now we've done that we can close we can go to file package projects android and android astc the reason i'm doing it through here is because if there's any issues anywhere along the line it'll give us a more direct answer to what might be wrong in some cases if not it should just build so got our new folder let's do a new one in here and we'll call this apk which is the file for our oculus select folder and we can show the output log here so we just let this run this might take a little while so the first time you build an apk file it takes quite a while not gonna lie based on the specs you machine that because it's got to compile a load of stuff but once you've done it once every build should be iteratively faster so we've got some warnings there we can ignore the only thing we're worried about is if there's any red text that comes up because that'll cause a crash so i'm gonna let this run and i'll come right back with any errors or warnings and we'll see what see what to do next so excellent we've got build success and it said build complete in the bottom right hand side so if we close this window down we can actually put it onto our headset the other way to build would put this directly onto the headset for you to test but like i said it might be a little bit false so if you were to do that you would just go to project launcher advanced and then android astc and then make sure it's by the book so quest 2 and then do launch this will launch it directly to the headset and you can keep track of it here as well but the difference is it's more of a pain to find the apk file so if you wanted to send it to someone the first way we did would give it give that to you if we go to desktop new folder projects apk you see here we've got our android stc and we've got our full project loaded up which is exactly what we want keep an eye on, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see the next video where i show you how to reduce this file size quite a bit so keep an eye on that but for now we'll finish this one and this will actually launch it to the headset and then that's pretty much it you're good to go so it says launching on android once it hit once it gets to this part it won't actually go any further but you should be able to put the headset on and then when you put it on you'll actually be inside the scene so i can see this now and i can teleport around and i can interact with things so that's pretty much it if you built so if i quit inside the application so if i put the headset back on and I quit in here, quit button, you'll see that it actually updates in the Epic Launcher and it'll say completed as well. That's where it becomes a little bit of a pain. But now, if we want to put the first application on our headset, we just need to go to our folder, APK. We could send this file to people if we want them to play our game, but all we gotta do is hit install my project and it'll run. It'll say performing streamed install as long as your headset is connected to the PC. And once you've done that, it'll actually be on there and you'll be able to find it in your files. And in your headset, what you want to do is you want to pop it on. You want to go to apps and in the top right, it'll say all. So you do the drop down. you then go to unknown sources and you'll see the name of the project that you created, which you'll be able to load up. So that's pretty much it. I just want to say thank you to all the Patreons for making this possible again. And if you do have any issues throughout this project, make sure you head over to the discord. We will help you out. But I think this video, everything in it should help you get started. And that Haxam error, never had an issue with it. So pretty much don't worry about it if it fails. I didn't. 
So in the next video that will be coming out, we will look at project settings and how we can make our project look better, play better, and just run a little bit nicer on the headset. And we'll take a look at the Oculus De Developer Hub as well to view those stuff. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Bye.